While the coral-eating starfish is natural habitat and primary source of diet is the reef, it is also destroying this habitat and, subsequently, removing its shelter and food from within this unique marine environment. Coral coverage has become devastated over the past 27 years. The Australian Institute of Marine Science lists two main contributors for this loss, tropical cyclones and the crown of thorns starfish. The crown of thorns starfish has become well known for the long-term destruction of the Great Barrier Reef by completely eradicating reef building coral, thus resulting in the deterioration of the biodiversity of the reef. The Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority states that when the reefs are healthy and population numbers are low, the coral eating starfish is inclined to consume the quicker developing corals, thus permitting the slower building coral species to form colonies and, as a result, assist with coral diversity. However, when environmental conditions are favourable and with limited predators, overpopulation of the thorn-covered starfish can see significant damage on the reef. Given the importance of a healthy reef for the biodiversity of its inhabitants, the heritage stance of this site, in addition to the tourism dollars this generates for the economy, an importance needs to be placed on protecting and preserving this unique environment. The crown of thorn starfish only becomes predatory for the reefs if they begin to consume more coral than what is growing. Therefore, much research needs to consider the issues relating to the population growth and the sustainable methods to reduce the crown of thorn starfish into manageable numbers to assist with preserving this heritage listed site for generations to come. Regents of the University of Michigan break down the biology of the starfish. It has between 8 and 21 arms and can reach a diameter of between 25 and 35 centimetres. An adult can have a life expectancy of approximately 15 to 17 years and reaches sexual maturity at 2 years of age. De La Coeur states that reproduction happens only once a year. However, an adult female is capable of releasing 60 million eggs at a time that swim in the ocean for 3 weeks once fertilised before coming to rest on the ocean floor. A monitoring program conducted by the Australian Institute of Marine Science focused on following the outbreak pattern of the starfish over a period of 15 years. The results have shown that outbreaks start in the north of the reef and shift south following the ocean currents. Regents of the University of Michigan describe the starfish as an opportunistic carnivore. As the starfish passes over the coral, it excrudes its stomach through the mouth and onto the coral, secreting stomach enzymes to break down the coral tissues and then absorbs this through the stomach wall. The Commonwealth of Australia highlights the biodiversity of the Great Barrier Reef, noting it has one of the richest, most complex natural systems on Earth. Regents of the University of Michigan discuss the implications of coral coverage loss due to threats such as the starfish, noting that the biodiversity within the reef system will shift. This biodiversity is required to assist with a healthy reef system. The healthier the reef system, the better able it is to endure the stresses imposed by the starfish. So what are we to do? How can we help save this unique marine environment? The Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority note that intervention is required when outbreaks of the coral-eating starfish consume more coral than what is regenerated, putting forward short-term and long-term strategies to assist with number control during these periods. The Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority discusses the short-term strategy, noting it involves manually injecting the starfish with certified solutions, a method that has been used since the 1980s and founded by the Australian Government. Furthermore, they also discussed the need for extensive surveillance of the areas affected and an inclusive ongoing database regarding the health of the reef and success of this plan. Long term, the aim is to protect the reef and its ecosystem from further outbreaks. The Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority states that to do this, the reef requires further monitoring. Between 2014 and 2017, importance is being placed on preserving coral coverage using information from research and eradication methods from a current outbreak.